Now, it looks like this summer, lots of people will take their holidays somewhere in the UK. So this week's question is, do you need to splash out on expensive camping equipment or will the cheaper stuff keep you covered? To find out, we packed up our camping gear and headed off-road in the back of two pickup trucks. I'd got the premium tech. While I'd bagged the budget stuff. In due course, we were deposited in a convenient bit of the great outdoors, where the first challenge was waiting. Oh, clue! OK, Craig and Otis, getting shelter quickly is vital when camping in all weathers. So your first task is to pitch your tents against the clock. This is going to start badly, dip in the middle, and the least said about the end, the better. <laughs> Let's go. My premium tent comes from the famous Scottish tent makers Van Gogh. It's the F10 Krypton UL2. How much is it? Uh, 480 quid. 480 quid? Yeah, but it's got Krypton in the title, and that's where Superman came from. It better be superhuman for that price. Mm -hmm. While my budget model comes from French manufacturer Fourclairs, it's the Trek 500 Fresh and Black and costs just £130, so almost a quarter of Craig's posh tricks and sticks. Talking of sticks, my poles are all connected together. Hang on, Miss Shusha, I'm trying to get a signal. <laughs> so the basic frame is easy to fathom out. Kind of sorted, really. And the inner tent then simply clips onto it. Coming in. Unlike Craig, I have to thread my poles through the fabric, which is a bit fiddly. Why won't that go in? However, once that's done, the finish line is in sight. I, on the other hand, still have work to do. Taking this goes over the top. Because my rain sheet comes as a separate layer that has to be arranged carefully over the frame. I'm not that far away, I don't think. Oh, just what about you? Yeah, all done, mate. In fact, my top-notch tent took nearly five minutes longer to put up than Otis's economy model. Oh, well done. You've beaten me, then. I've got to say, Craig, on the surface of things, mine looks better than yours. Nice and spacious, mine, though. Does your Van Gogh have blackout fabric? Um, no, it doesn't. Now, oh, see, mine does. So if we were camping in the land of the midnight sun, I'd be getting sleep, you wouldn't. Well, we're not in Norway, Otis. And forget any chance of kip, because we've been told to test our tent's waterproofness, starting with my Van Gogh. I'm going for the seams, mate. Yeah? Water always gets in the seams. Nah, not these seams, mate. They're taped, which should make them 100% waterproof. And it looks like they are. Quite impressive, really. But could the same be said of my much cheaper foreclads? Well, for uh, 130 quid, yours seems to be doing the business, doesn't it? Well, that's probably because they test their tents in tropical storm conditions. Nice and dry in here, mate. I've run out of water. Very happy with that. So both our tents stayed dry after a good soaking. But my much cheaper foreclass was quicker to put up and blocked out more daylight. The foreclass has got to take it. Yeah, 1-0 to the foreclass. On to the next test, then. Stoves. And again, we'll start with the pricey option. This is the Kadak 2 Cook Pro 2 Deluxe QR. <laughs> Doesn't exactly dance off the tongue but the quality shines through. Check out my enamel-covered pot stands and my powder-coated lid. What low-budget beauty could I fight back with? This is the Camping Gaz Camping Kitchen 2CV. I've got a twin burner stove here, and it's only 50 quid. Yes, less than half the price of your costly cooker, Craig, and over a kilo lighter. Anyway, what we need is a cooking challenge to see how these two work. At which point the producers gave us oh, just that. Here we go. Along with a marshmallow for some reason. Our task was simple. Which stove could boil water the fastest? British camping weather. Or typical, should I say. Because when you're cold or wet, right. as we now are, getting a hot brew in a hurry is essential. And why not throw in an egg while we're at it? We both have exactly the same amount of water in exactly the same pans. Three, two, one, go! And lighting my stove was as simple as pressing a button. Have you not got automatic ignition, mate? No, Craig, just a good old-fashioned lighter. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. And I was soon cooking on gas. Slowly. But eventually... Ooh, we're close! Starting to get a few bubbles from the bottom rising to the top of the pan. However, while both our stoves are rated at 2,000 watts, it was my Kadak that came to a proper boil first. Bubbulation! 
in just under 16 minutes. Which was nearly 30 seconds quicker than my budget one. Smash! So my expensive tech claws back the lost ground to level the score at one all. Boiled egg, anyone? Yep, just an egg. Time for our last test of the day. Sleeping bags. OK, let's talk sleeping bags, Otis. This Rab Alpine Pro 600 is about 300 quid. What? But it is filled with ethically sourced duck down. Weighs 1.2 kilos, which is really important, you know, if you're lugging it about all day. So what are you packing? Well, for starters, Craig, a much fatter wallet because my bag costs around 15% of yours. This is the Berghaus Transition 300. OK, weight and filling. 1.93 kilos, fully synthetic. What's that? It looks like some ice with the messaging. Great, pity we've not got an ice picking implement. These challenge introductions are getting ridiculous. It seems we had to spend some time in the cold to see if our bags could keep us warm. Well, I mean, it's not really that cold today. That's an easy test. Conveniently, the producers had come prepared and had laid out a solution. Refrigerated vans. And while you shouldn't try this at home, apparently it's perfectly fine for us to spend 20 minutes in a van at minus five. The potential temperature of some early spring camping takes your fancy. And boy, was it cold. My eyelashes are starting to crack when I blink. With both of us tucked up, the test began. And to keep things nice and scientific, we're recording the internal temperature of each of our sleeping bags using a digital thermometer. OK, I've got my probe in my sleeping bag. My wrap bag is rated to minus 10 degrees centigrade and was clearly doing its job. I've got to be honest, my feet are sweating. <laughs> in which case, I should be on fire because my much cheaper Berghouse is rated to an even lower minus 19. How are you feeling so far, Otis? Anything that's in the sleeping bag is actually quite toasty. My feet, are, which are normally the first to go, they feel fine at the minute. However, while both of us were feeling perfectly comfortable, the thermometers were telling a slightly different story. My bag was registering a very decent 16 centigrade. While my budget Berghouse was six degrees colder. I'm only at 10. So maybe it isn't quite so efficient. However, it was still keeping me plenty warm. I'm really bad in the cold, and this is almost making it a joy. And with that, our challenge was complete. Gotta say, cheap tech did pretty darn good.